And now, folks, it is going to be time that we shall conclude this special off with... The grand finale! And after discussing about the theme parks, about Marvel, about Star Wars and their live action stuff, it is now time that we shall be discussing about what Disney does best, animation. And the lineup that they have, oh boy, is it promising. Now let's go and begin with what Walt Disney Animation Studios has in store. And the first thing that they did in the panel is that they went and presented the new trailer for Moana 2. And Logan, what did you think about that trailer? Oh, hold on a sec. Eh. Oh. And I say that because I I did enjoy the first Moana movie. Don't get me wrong. I definitely like it for like the songs, the characters, the animation, and all that stuff. But so far, the sequel is not really grabbing my attention. Mainly because I feel like they're going with the same direction. They're going with the same route they did with the first movie. And I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not liking the idea of like Walt Disney Animation Studios being the sequel film. Like being getting to the sequels now because... Mm. I feel like that's like the one animation studio that shouldn't be making sequels given their legacy and all that stuff. But hey, I mean, I could be wrong. This movie could be like really good and all that stuff. It's just like for me, I'm just not, I'm just not as hyped compared to like everybody else. But, and plus, given the fact that this was originally going to be a miniseries, it, I, mm, they should have just stuck with it being a miniseries. Sorry. Yeah, maybe. I, you know, I will give you this. There's not a lot in the sequel that they're really showing much uh, that feels exciting. Like, really, the big thing that they kind of revealed is just we we have a bit of a taste of how uh, Moana's sister is going to be. And other than that, I feel like there's just a lot more that they could go and present, but they're like they're still hiding. Like, I still have faith that there's a lot that this movie has in store and maybe Disney wants to reveal the big surprises uh but like they want to reveal the big surprises t for the movie itself but so far mm -hmm. from what we have been seeing in this trailer it's like you know it's like you know i want to be excited for it but i don't know if this trailer really convinced me 100 percent if i should not to mention that other than the little sister like we still have no idea how these new characters are going to be because technically there's going to be like three new people that are going to be joining uh maui and moana and we still know absolutely nothing about them so honestly i i think this is going to be a case more i'm just going to pin this on the blame on the trailer itself that it's not great but um like honestly i'm still keeping hopes up that maybe uh there is some good that will be in store with the movie itself and especially right. like the, the the especially like one great thing about it though is that the animation they presented looks great like it mm -hmm. it still looks a very strong looking feature oh yeah don't get me wrong on that I feel like it's going to like the route of like Frozen Two, where it's like the movie will be fine, but it's going to be nothing special, honestly. Yeah, maybe. Well, we'll we'll see. Uh, but there is a sequel that I'm sure you would be excited for, and that is Zootopia Two, and they have confirmed <clears throat> a lot of what's going to be in store for that. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention that with Moana Two, that's going to be coming out November 27th of this year. But next year we will be getting Zootopia Two, and they have revealed quite a lot for that feature. Uh, not only are we going to see some new places within Zootopia, but they have also introduced the concept that we are going to see some reptiles. Now, of course, there. Are the, now we did. Now the clip that they shown at uh, D23, we do see um uh nick and judy that they're going across the shore and they're going more on the seaside of zootopia where we do get to see some new mammals that are going to be involved like uh seals and walruses but also the introduction of reptiles in this will also include a new character which is a snake uh that is who is named gary voiced by kiwi kwan and that's going to be coming out next year on november 26 now uh safe to say you're more excited for this than uh, moana too aren't you 
Oh, yeah, for sure. And like I said before with Moana 2, it's like I'm not really big on like Walt Disney Animation Studios themselves making sequels to their films. But with this one, I'm definitely intrigued with the offer because, yeah, I mean, adding reptiles into the Zootopia universe, I'm curious to see where they're going with that direction. Especially like they're going to keep snakes as snakes, Mm -hmm. or at least what I assume it's going to be just, I don't see any clothes in that snake. So it's like, it's hard to tell where they're going to go with that direction. Well, I mean, if you look like they'll still be a bit anthropomorphic because again, he's going to be voiced by Kiwi Kwan. So he will be talking. True that. Yeah. And also, I'm not sure if you noticed in the teaser poster they released, but you can also see what it looks like to be a chameleon. Yeah, somewhere no, that. I did see that actually. There, there's like little like chameleon agents, and there's actually like a few that that spawn. Uh, here, I'm gonna go and try to look it up. Actually, uh, try to see if I could go and uh, find it. Uh, here, let, let me see because they did put out that poster. Uh, where is it? Yes, uh, right over here. So yeah, like you do see this, uh, oh, it's on, oh, it's from Facebook. So yeah, you do see it right over here. No, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me <laughs> alone. There we go. Thank you. So you do see in the poster, like you got Gary right over here, Nick and Judy. Uh, and then like, like little bits and pieces. Like if you look closely, like you'll see like little chameleon agents that are like, going around maybe looking for nick and judy or like maybe for gary or something like that but you you actually do see that oh did you oh did you actually send me the uh did you actually send me the uh poster i i did not know or or i probably got a message from someone else <laughs> Anyways. Probably did, yeah but yeah no i'm definitely and plus that clip they provide with the walrus that definitely gives out like the first movie vibe like yeah it's going a different direction what they did with flash but Something tells me I'm going to like that walrus. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like, for me, if you guys know me, I love Zootopia. I consider it to be the best animated feature of the last decade, and it's one of my favorite Disney films. And uh, with this sequel, it looks like it could live up to the original. Like, if it's going to be as good, that might be a tall order, but if it's something like uh, what we got with Inside Out 2, then I'm definitely sold. And so far with the concept that... Uh, they have brought up it definitely looks intriguing so i'm definitely hyped up and i'm already putting it as one of my most anticipated movies of next year same here and also i did like the zootopia plus series so that's definitely really good all right awesome all right so moving forward there is one more major announcement uh that disney has made and that is regarding frozen 3 now uh one thing they have revealed in terms of frozen 3 is that um it's not going to be coming out just after zootopia 2 but rather it's going to be coming out in 2027 However, Jennifer Lee did confirm that uh, for 2026, Disney is actually working on a top secret original animated feature. They just chose not to reveal what it is just yet at D23. But as for uh, Frozen 3, they confirmed that the big goal that they want to do for the third and fourth film is to go and answer a whole bunch of questions uh, that people have in regards to the first and second movie and so far they're still early in production but one thing they have revealed is a brand new concept art by Brittany lee i believe and uh you can correct that if i'm wrong by the way uh and from there you may have noticed that uh, there are some new things that they are introducing we see anna and elsa on their respective horses and uh, they're looking upon a castle in the sky, which uh, my guess is probably uh, Valhalla. And then uh, on the corner, you see there's like probably the next villain that might be this evil Viking or, or something like that. So uh, just out of curiosity, what do you think? Um, I'm definitely looking forward to it in Frozen 2. Yeah. <laughs> um, like I said before, like, I didn't, I mean, not to say that Frozen 2 was a bad film, but it's certainly not the first one. And I personally love the first Frozen. Is it overhyped? Is it over, overwhelmed? Yeah, but, you know, it's, at the end of the day, it's still a good movie. I mean, I can definitely see people not really enjoyed it, 
much, but I mean, for what it is, I mean, I'm not sure if you can see. Yeah, like, I was about to say, I could see behind you that you got <clears> your, <throat> you got the two girls right behind you. Oh yeah, I still, I got these back when the first movie came out, like 2013, 14. Oh dang! And so I just couldn't resist like buying them. So it, it's kind of a long story how I, but, <laughs> but no, yeah, I definitely enjoyed like the the first Frozen movie, and I'm definitely intrigued like we're like taking the direction of Frozen three and four. So if they're gonna promise in that. If they're going to keep that promise, like answering questions from like the first movie, then I'm all in. But again, we'll have to see how they're going to execute it because I don't know. When it comes to like the Disney sequels, like they can come to like either they can be like a mixed bag. Like it can be good, it can be okay, but nothing too grand. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. We'll see. I mean, they've been hyping it up, and so far the people at Disney saying are saying that they're loving what they're doing with uh, with the upcoming Frozen films. But I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll have to wait and see. I do like. I agree. I do prefer the first Frozen film than the second, and I really like the first Frozen movie. Um, but honestly, I'm keeping my hopes up on, on the third film. You know, I'm not against the idea of more Anna and Elsa and more epic adventures that they would have in store. So we'll we'll see how it goes with that. Yeah, I mean, hey, they're building, they're building the lands in uh, Paris, Hong Kong, yeah. so they gotta like, they gotta milk that franchise somehow. So for <laughs> sequel, exactly, <laughs> they gotta keep those, they gotta keep those lands relevant, relevant. So it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, actually, like now there's technically four. I mean, like we got Japan, we got Paris is coming soon. Oh yeah, Hong That's Kong right, is yeah. getting one. Uh, technically, Epcot maybe with Norway. Eh, that's more just like the 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 ride within Norway, not yeah, so guess. much land. Yeah, but some people would technically see that. Which, by the way, side uh, really quick, Fantasy Springs. Oh my God, I I'm jealous. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It looks so phenomenal. I'm it's like upset. Phenomenal, yeah. I'm upset that the U.S. doesn't have anything like that yet. It's basically if Disney were to make Fantasy Land today, like that. Just, yes, it, I love it and. I feel like I, if there's like the one international park I really want to go and visit, it's Tokyo Disney. It's definitely top priority. Oh yeah, on my list. me too. Anyways, moving forward, so those are all the announcements from Disney Animation. Now let's move forward to Pixar, and we're gonna start in a different order, and uh, let's discuss about Toy Story Five. So yes, it has now been confirmed that Andrew Stanton will be directing the picture. I don't know if he's also writing it, but uh, like uh, the point is, Andrew Stanton is gonna be the guy taking the lead to make this movie. And not only have they confirmed that Woody is going to be coming back after breaking up with the t with the gang at the end of Toy Story 4, but they've also revealed the plot is now going to be the toys facing relevant uh, facing a challenge to stay relevant in a world of technology. Uh, this is especially shown with this concept art here where you see the toys looking concerned as Bonnie is under her covers playing with her iPad. And on top of that, they have also confirmed that the villain of this feature, or I, should I say the villains, is going to be 50 malfunctioning Buzz Lightyear uh, action figures where they're permanently stuck in play mode where they're constantly thinking that they are the real Buzz Lightyear. So, Logan, I want to know what you think on this. It's definitely something I feel like if they have to make another toy, they will have to go with that route. Because, yeah, that is definitely something that kids nowadays, not to say all kids, but like most kids, they're just really fascinated with their tablets and just like play with those. Because I have nieces and nephews that they definitely love play on their tablet. And I see that it's like, yeah, it's, I, I don't know how I feel about that because I feel like I mean, granted, I'm not one to talk. I spend if I'm not animating, if I'm not, I just like scroll through like social media and TikTok and all that stuff. So really, I'm not really one to talk. But at the same time, it's like yeah, that can be like hazardous. Whereas like they should they should go out and play with like their toys and all that stuff. Not so much to sit around just like watching. I don't know who's uh, watching like Coco Melon or, or whatnot. I much rather it's like it's definitely intriguing to see like going that route and knowing Pixar, I feel like they're gonna handle this respectfully, like not so much like targeting the kids that are like gonna be 
tablets, but more just like how how they're going to get it resolved. Like, I don't know. I'm definitely intrigued to see where they go in that direction because I feel like this is they. I'm surprised they didn't do this for the fourth movie because that seems like a no brainer at that point to make it how the toy's going to react toward uh, like tablets and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to lie. I honestly feel like now Pixar would have to really convince me that Toy Story 5 is worthwhile. Now, keep in mind, I actually love Toy Story 4. I actually think, like, I actually love it as much as the other Toy Story films. Like, that much. And especially, mm-hmm. like, after that ending, I, like, I honestly teared up. So now, like, I want to know, why is it that suddenly we see Woody coming back with the gang? Like, why go and reverse that ending? Well, like, how are they going to go and explain that? And also, I'm sure they'll they explain, I'm sure they're going to explain it somehow, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, but and then there's also the idea of the villains, like with the but, like with all the malfunctioning Buzz Lightyears. I feel like it, it, there, there's something about it that for me feels like it's a bit familiar. It's a little bit like with what they did in Toy Story Two. You know when like Buzz and the gang are in Al's toy barn, and you see like Buzz Lightyear crossing uh the the aisle with all the Buzz Lightyears and stuff like that. It feels like mm-hmm. it's a, a bit similar to it but i'm not but i am not saying though that i have my doubts for it um i you know i am open to the idea that maybe this could legitimately be pretty solid that maybe they could really nail this one it could be as good as the previous toy story features and like you said i actually do think the idea of having these um you you know that they would have all these um uh like the, the concept of the toys versus uh, technology, I think it's a very solid idea. Definitely something that, we're, you know, that would be great for Robot Chicken to go and actually tackle upon. But it's just like wait, with ro- these other... Wait, I- but- robot Chicken? Wait, what? You said, wait, you said, like, yeah, this is something that Robot Chicken will ta- tackle. Oh, did I say like, Robot Chicken? You- Sorry. Yeah, you- <laughs> Is it because somebody mentioned that? Yeah, robot I think it's skit? because I saw I saw in the chat while someone said robot chicken. Sorry, no, but it's something that yeah. uh, it's a it's a great idea for Toy Story to actually tackle upon. So, honestly, there are some things that I am wondering that they should go and answer. But uh, like, I am open to the idea that they'll still nail it, especially with the fact that they did get Andrew Stanton back in order to work on this. And if there's anyone who is able to go and justify a Toy Story 5, it would definitely be Andrew Stanton. Exactly. But at the same time, could they go back to just making the ABC specials? Like, we're not really missing much on these sequels, but I get it. Toy Story is a bigger franchise, so why not just milk it with all its worth? But at this point, I'm not complaining. It's Toy Story. I'm sure... I'm sure it'll be fine. I mean, heck, I'm not one of those Toy Story hater or Toy Story Four haters like most people. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it for what it is. I mean, Forky is definitely one of my favorite characters from the franchise. Oh yeah. Oh so. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we'll we'll see. Me like there, there uh, I think in conclusion, there's definitely some ans- There's definitely some an- some uh, some answers that they absolutely need to go and. Uh, and, and actually respond to like there, there are some, or there are some questions that Pixar should absolutely answer with Toy Story 5 but there is a chance that it could still be great one way to find out yep and uh moving forward there was also mention about the next Pixar movie which is the original feature Alio and uh, there have been some updates since last time they have revealed that there's going to be two new directors working on this feature specifically Turning Red's Domi Shi and Madeline Sharafian. And also, there is a casting change as well. Originally, America Farah was going to play Elio's aunt, but now that role is going to be played by Zoe Saldana. And uh, mm. other than that, um, not much really re- uh, that they have revealed, or at least publicly. So, uh, yeah, uh, any words on this one? I just hope this film doesn't go the same route as a good time or where it has like these production issues with the, the delays and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm still hopeful that this movie is still going to be good. I mean, I'm definitely going to be seeing it hit theaters, but man, that hurt, man. It sucks that they had to delay it for next year because I was actually kind of like looking forward to seeing it this year, but eh, I mean, we got inside out too, so I can't really complain, but 
Yeah, that is true. I, I am hoping for the best for this one. And usually, and it is true, usually Pixar films that has these kind of production troubles, like not just uh, Good Dinosaur, but even Brave. Like sometimes they don't often go well creatively. So I'm, I'm just hoping for the best that we could get something good. I mean, I did I did really like the trailer they did put out. Like that was really fun. So we'll, we'll, we'll see with what they'll have in store with uh, the next uh, trailer that they'll bring up at some point. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right. Now, next up we got is yet another original Pixar film. This time, uh, this is like fresh out of the oven. This is like brand new, uh, newly announced. This is called Hoppers. And just to go in quickly, uh, uh, read the description here from my source on discussing films. Uh, it says here, the main character of the film is a girl named Mabel who transfers her mind into a robot beaver, the titular Hoppers, which allows her to infiltrate the animal kingdom in the film. It's there that she meets a regal king beaver. Mabel's love for animals is what allows her to jump into the robot beaver's body without hesitation. Another character in Hoppers is the crooked mayor of the town, voiced by John Hamm. And on top of that, we also got a uh, pre, uh, a little bit of a, a teaser, or at least uh, we got a bit of a concept art here. We see Mabel that's in the machine where it puts her mind into the robot beaver over here that's just running loose and going crazy. Uh, and by the way, it's worth mentioning, this will be uh, directed by Daniel Chong, and this is actually going to be coming out in 2026, in the spring of 2026. So before Toy Story 5, we're going to get another original Pixar film. So what did you think I of this one? I'm definitely hopping and exciting for this one. <laughs> um, yeah, no, this is definitely... As soon as I... I mean, I just love, like, the look of the beaver. It definitely gives out turning red vibes. And I'm definitely intrigued to where they're going to go with this direction because, hey, it's an original project from Pixar, so I'm definitely looking forward to it. And also, given that it's from the director from that also created We Bear Bears, I'm definitely intrigued to see where this is going because from the episodes I've seen of We Bear Bears, I definitely did enjoy what they had to offer. I didn't really watch much of it, but I only seen like a handful handful of episodes. But yeah, I, I definitely this definitely has potential to be like another great maybe not like the most memorable Pixar movie, but I mean I could be wrong on that account, but I feel like it's gonna be the same route as like turning red, where it's definitely gonna be really enjoyable for mm -hmm. what it has to offer. Yeah, from yeah, like um from what I could tell, it does feel like um that this could be one of Pixar's more comical features. This does like, especially the narrative does sound a bit similar to Turning Red. Uh, but it does like even the tone, like just from what we see in the concept art, uh, it looks like something in which that they're just gonna go wild and crazy, and like it'll be focused on being more joke oriented. And the fact that this is from the creator of We Bear Bears, like. I haven't seen a whole lot of uh, episodes of that either, but I have definitely heard uh, some great things about it. So uh, I can imagine like we'll be getting that type of uh, humor applied onto Hoppers, and I'm sure uh, like it'll probably it'll probably work out great for it. Oh yeah, for sure. And plus, like I said, I just like the design of like the beaver itself, it, the robotic beaver, mm -hmm. and that's something too that's interesting. Like it's not like the main character turning into the animal. But rather, it's going inside the mind of a robotic beaver, which might have potential. Yeah, I, I could see this working out. Uh, so yeah, honestly, I do, I do like, uh, I do see with Hoppers, it definitely has a lot of promise. So we'll see about that. Uh, then moving forward, uh, we got a couple of shows. Uh, that'll be coming to Disney Plus from Pixar. First off is the long-awaited Win or Lose, which they finally confirmed a release date in which it's going to be coming out on December 6th. And they even release a little teaser trailer for it. Logan, what did you think of that one? I'm definitely intrigued with this one. Like I said, I mean, you can't go, like I said, you can't go along with like Pixar making something that's original. So, and plus this is going to be, with this being like their first ever like show, not something that like they got their blessing for, like Buzz Lightyear or Monsters at Work. I'm definitely intrigued to see how they're going to execute this. I mean, this looks like it's going to be lots of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely looks intriguing. I've always liked the concept 
of what they have with like everyone's perspective of this little league baseball game. So honestly, I'm I'm prepared to go in. Uh, someone I, actually, someone who went to uh, D23 actually stated that they went to they actually saw the first two episodes and apparently it's actually hilarious. So it could legit okay. be worthwhile. And there, yeah. is, and there is another series they have confirmed in which coming next year, there's going to be a series called Dream Productions, which is going to be an Inside Out spinoff series, uh, which will be set in the movie studio that is in Riley's mind. Like, you know, the studio that would go and make uh, the dreams that Riley would have at night. So apparently there's going to be a whole series that's going to be based on that. Now, we don't necessarily have a lot of information other than the fact that it's going to be coming out next year. So, uh, Logan, I would like to know, what did you think of uh, that? I think it's going to look cute. I mean, I kind of like see it as like the other like short series that they've done, like the Doug series, where it's like, yeah, they're short and cute, but nothing too grand or anything like that. And this, I mean, this is coming from somebody that really loves Inside Out 2. Like, I think that's, like, one of the best sequels they've done in a while. So, I'm definitely more intrigued, but not so much hype for it. But, who knows, maybe it could, be like, blow my mind some way. But, I seriously doubt it. But, I'll watch it still. Yeah, I mean, I can see the potential of it. I mean, like, I, I have seen plenty of the other, like, short series that Pixar would go and release. And, I mean... They're, they're they're not as like spectacular as the movies themselves, but you know honestly they're they're good for what it is. And I mean some of them are really enjoyable. And some and I would even say the one exception that I feel like might be better than the movies is the um is Cars on the Road with uh with Lightning McQueen and Mater. That those ones are actually pretty enjoyable. Um, you know, I, I uh, forgot those existed. I haven't got a chance to watch those. Give it a chance. Heard... You, you'll be surprised. Okay. Yeah, and uh, honestly, with this one, I'm kind of expecting maybe it's going to be something like that, where it's just going to be a bunch of shorts that I'm not expecting inside out level quality, but it's going to be cute. You know, it's like, it's something that will go and deliver on these cute stories. So ultimately, I guess oh, yeah. we'll we'll have to wait and see when that comes out. And plus, it, it dealt with dreams, so I'm sure like everybody, it's going to be like relatable. Get these awkward interesting bizarre dreams as like we all come across so i'm sure it'll be interesting on that aspect yeah uh by the way there is one more announcement but i'm gonna go on to a break because we're almost out of time until the next uh ads come in but uh i'm sure there's gonna be a lot to go and discuss about that so stay tuned for the biggest animation announcement at d23 all right, we are back, and we got one more announcement to go and discuss about, and it's not just any announcement. It is debatably the biggest movie news highlight at this year's D23. We don't have much info on it, but it has been confirmed that Pixar is making an Incredibles 3. Now, even though this is going to be a production, the one piece of info that we do know is that Pixar has managed to brought back Brad Bird into the production. Yes, um, for a while we've been thinking that maybe he quit Pixar because he went to uh, Skydance. Uh, but now it looks like the plans have changed and now he's going to be returning to Disney to go and work once again on The Incredibles. So... Logan, what do you think about this? And by the way, chat wall, just out of curiosity, I have heard rumors that apparently they are planning to have this be released in 2027, I think. Is that true? Or I don't know. Like, let me know what you think on that. Um, Hot take. I am uh, not looking forward to Incredibles 3. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No, uh, explain, man. Exp that's what we're here for. The reason why I'm not so excited about this is because, I mean... I thought Incredibles 2 was okay. Like, the real, literally the only thing I liked about Incredibles 2 was the fight scene between Jack-Jack and the raccoon. Like, that, I had a good time watching that. But everything else, I don't know. I just felt like, it just felt like nothing too, no pun intended, well, pun intended, incredible. And I just felt like it just felt like one of the more, like, 
generic side of things when it comes to, like the sequels. Not to say like everything is too so bad. Like I did like other moments too, like the Elastic Girl with the um, motorcycle moment. Like I thought that was really cool. But it's one of those movies that like I, I watch. I enjoyed it for what it is, but nothing I'll look I don't see myself looking back and like rewatching it. And also, like I said before, I'm not really big on like the whole like having these mo- like sequel after sequel after sequel to all these movies. I just wish there would be like more like original things coming out of these studios. But again, I could be proven wrong. Incredibles three, who knows? Maybe this could be like better than the second. Movie. I will just have to wait and see. But yeah, that's um, another hot take for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that's fine. Honestly, I personally enjoyed Incredibles 2 more so than you have or compared to what many others have. I mean, it's not as good as the first film. I think that is a given right there. Uh, but still, I think it is actually pretty fun. I still liked it uh, nonetheless. I think it's definitely a nice, worthy sequel to the original. And hearing that not only are we getting a third film, but the fact that... Um, we also have uh, Brad Bird coming back. That I feel like is exciting. And I think there is a part of me that is honestly intrigued about why is it that Brad Bird decided to go back to Pixar and work on The Incredibles instead of staying at Skydance? Because he had been because for a while he had been working on this movie called Ray Gun uh, at the studio. This original movie he wanted to do for quite a while. Uh, but then, but now like with this announcement, it feels like, okay, the dynamic suddenly has changed. Now I have heard rumors about like so many things. Maybe Brad Bird has already finished working, uh, on that movie. Like that, you know, that film is finished and now he's moving forward, moving to his, uh, next job. Uh, or maybe the Ray Gunn movie is fully canceled and that he broke up with uh, John Lasseter and stuff like that. So I don't know what's going on, but I feel like it's kind of this interesting twist that is going on, especially with what's happening at Skydance. So that that's the thing, honestly, that I feel like, you know, I'm curious, but also why I feel pretty hyped up for this Incredibles 3 news. I was going to say, knowing the situation with Skydance, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like the latter, but... Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, we'll we'll see with what's going on. I mean, I'm sure at some point we'll probably get some news about it. But uh, for now, considering that um, with the Ray Gun project, there's a lot of interest for that feature. I'm sure there's going to be people out there who will try to go and figure out that answer. You know, like what what happened to the uh, Ray Gunn project now that Brad Bird is back at Pixar. So overall, we'll see. But I would say overall in general, with, um, with, with the whole panel for Disney Animation and for Pixar, I'll definitely say that even though most of it is just sequels, this is a vast improvement, or this is definitely better than the live action stuff. And I feel like even with the sequels, I'm much more interested in checking those out more so than I would be with any of the live action things that they have announced. I feel like these are the things that I do want to go and check out on the big screen, even if I would have a little bit of my doubts like with uh, Moana 2 or with Toy Story 5. I feel like I'm definitely more interested in seeing those, especially when they're all like they still do introduce some interesting um you, you know when they have some interesting ideas to go and present and some great animation also oh i believe it yeah no i'm definitely more intrigued with their animation side of things the live action but at the same time it's like i wish there would be like more to offer when it comes to the original ideas but hey if they're gonna like if they're still making original films and i'm still down with that and what they have to offer with the sequels i mean there might be some movies I'll check in theaters like Zootopia 2, but others, if they don't really grab my attention or if I don't hear really good things about them, I'll just wait till they're on Disney Plus or not even bother with them. But again, prove me wrong. Hopefully Moana 2 will be the next best thing or Incredibles 3 the next best thing. Who knows? So in the end, I have high hopes for these movies, but my expectations are, I say somewhere in the middle. But when it comes to that, when it comes to Hoppers, oh yeah, most definitely. I'm lo- looking forward to that. And Ellie, Elio? Elio, that yeah. Too? Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that one too. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah, pretty much with all the animation. Like I would say with all like compared to the live action stuff or anything else that's been announced, I would say I'm most excited for the animation stuff. And with that said, now I want to know from the chat wall, I like to ask you all, what do you all think about um, the animation announcements at D23? Which movies are you the most excited for? And let me know what you think of your thoughts on some of them, especially like the bigger announcements. All right, let's see now. This is a phenomenal lineup. Moana 2 looks great. Zootopia 2 feels like a natural expansion to the world. Frozen 3 isn't 100% grabbing me, but I'll remain open-minded. Elio looks really charming. Hoppers could be pretty funny. Incredibles 3 could be totally wicked. And while I'm still very, very on the fence about Toy Story 5, uh, it presents an okay idea, and the fact that Andrew Stanton is directing could be cool. It might, uh, it might be redeemed if it goes full Mitchells versus the Machines. Oh boy, that would be interesting, actually. <laughs> like the Good tech, boy. yeah, mm -hmm. like the tech really going against the toys. All right, that'll be kind of like far fetched. But if they do, I mean, because Toy Story is more like a grounded film. If you take out the toys coming to life aspect, but you know, I, I can I can see them making it work. Yeah, maybe we could see. Um. As someone who prefers Incredibles 2 to the first one, Incredibles 3 is both my least surprising announcement and my most anticipated one. Hoppers is the dumbest idea for a Pixar movie I've heard, and I kind of love it for that. Zootopia 2 <laughs> adding reptiles to the universe sounds like the perfect evolution of the first movie's premise. So the Frozen sequels are just going to be about answering questions nobody asked about the first one. All right. Well, I mean, technically some people have. Uh, let's see. As someone who really loves the first movie, I am definitely hyped for Zootopia 2. Uh, I'm definitely interested in how they're gonna, do, gonna add reptiles in the film. Also, a major question. Do you think that they'll make Nick and Judy into a couple in this? And will it work or not? If it turns out to be bad, we could definitely agree that it would probably be better than the certain fan comic. Uh, I would describe it more, but I would rather not risk getting the stream demonetized. Ah, uh, yeah, we know which Dang, one you're talking I'll about. Dang, I was going to make a joke about that, but you beat me to the punch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fair enough. What's not anticipated? It's all great. First, I got to say, we all went back in time to 2016 when these two films were announced, and I feel hyped all over again. Moana, make way, make way. Very anticipated. I love the direction, and Zootopia 2, hell yeah. Talking animals movie, woo! The uh, Frozen three, uh, not big for it, but okay. Pixar films, Elio, yes. Hoppers, yes. In, um, uh, in I N three, wait, I N three. Oh, Incredibles three, Incredibles yes. Three. Toy Story <laughs> five uh, is Bo in. Not sure about the villains. Buzz figures, I don't get it. The miniseries, uh, like invested in all. I'm completely excited. I'm glowing. Uh, I am glowing. Okay. <laughs> Out of all of these upcoming movies, I am honestly the most hyped for Zootopia 2. The inclusion of non-mammal animals in the world of Zootopia was possibly was a possibility I did not expect to become a reality. And I can imagine since this has been almost a decade in the in the making, Disney has a very important task to make this movie every bit as strong as the original, just like Across the Spider-Verse was for Sony. Also, I'll, I'll give them credit, I actually love the idea of introducing other types of animals. Alright, very nice. Um, uh, let's see what other comments. Uh, lightning round, go! Moana 2 is cool, but where's Tamatoa? Elio, just hoping it's fun. Incredibles 3, I thought it's a dream, but no, it's a reality. Toy Story 5, no matter what it's going to be, just as long as fantastic. Hoppers, really cute visuals and a story, so I'm all in. Frozen 3, not sure now. Zootopia 2, oh my gosh, I'm hoping, I'm hopping with joy with the fur, uh, the first I saw the short clip. Judy, I'm coming for you, my fave bunny. Alrighty then. Uh, Moana 2, second trailer made me more interested, uh, or made me more interested. Wicked versus Moana 2 will be the debate for my sister and I come this November. Zootopia 2, the ship has returned. I'm actually not hyped about the reptiles because didn't the original, uh, didn't the original people want to avoid reptiles and birds? 
Uh, Frozen 3, okay, it's still a two-parter. Uh, Elio, uh, oh god, that's a lot of last-minute changes. Hoppers, uh, this, this I'm more hyped for. Toy Story 5, I'm still not sure. And Incredibles 3, did Radbird leave Lassiter already? Maybe. Uh, let's see, I think I'll go and read... Um, I'll, what? Really quick, going back to that one comment you said about, like, the reptile... About the, uh, creator of Zootopia didn't want to include reptile. At the time, yes, but since that movie made bank at the box office, I'm sure it's like, no, 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 wait, I'm sure there's ideas for reptiles. Yeah, uh, probably. So, <laughs> Zootopia 2, reptiles. Zootopia 3, birds. I'm going to predict that. Well, we'll see. Uh, let's read two more comments. Uh, okay, actually, yeah, let's read two more comments. As someone who really loves the first movie, I am definitely hyped for Zootopia 2. I'm definitely interested in how they're going to add reptiles in the film. All, uh, also, major, uh, or did I read? Oh, no, no, no. Someone, uh, oh, no, no. I already read that one. Sorry about that. As far as the sequels go, the only one I'm really hyped up for is Zootopia 2. Though I'll, I'll still give the rest the, uh, a chance. But as Animat said, they look much more interesting than the live action stuff. Also, Hopper sounds absolutely bonkers and I love it. All right. Uh, those animation announcements are definitely the biggest highlights at D23 this year. Moana 2 has great potential. Zootopia 2 looks great so far. Pixar's originals like Elio and Hoppers looks promising. Toy Story 5 and Incredibles 3 look extremely promising as well. But Frozen 3 is my biggest highlight. But I still can't believe I finally met Jennifer Lee on Friday morning. I almost teared up after meeting her. Hey, very nice, nice. man. <laughs>